Hello, my name is Rob and welcome to Metal Monthly. This is a video series where we talk about everything that happened in metal music over the past month. Or in this case, the past two months, because although I have been making this series for three years, last month I just did not make a video for Metal Monthly. So in this video we have got two months worth of music to talk about, so let's just get straight into it. After I have some rum. Oh, that's really good. Anyway, albums. What albums were released in February and March? So we're going to start in February and we first off have In Flames with Forgone. So this band is huge and has been around forever. They help to pioneer melodic death metal and metalcore. They're kind of a big deal. So Forgone opens with an intro track that is a very light guitar thing. It's an instrumental, it's a lovely light little song. And then suddenly it bursts into the fast heavy metalcore. And do you know what? I really am starting to dislike albums that start with an intro that's like that. It's like, okay, yes, this is a nice little instrumental light song. Can we get to the metalcore that we all know is coming and is the reason I'm listening to this album? Is that just me? Anyway, the vocals are very rough, the drums are heavy, and they are clearly the focus. The guitar is more of a backing instrument here. This is very much headbanging kind of music. Apparently this album is them going back to their roots, although I'll admit I'm not a huge fan of the band, so I don't really know. This album didn't really do a whole lot for me personally, but as I say, I'm not a massive fan of them. But as kind of background metal music, it's pretty good. Oh, this rum is delicious. Next up, Pierce the Veil with The Jaws of Life. And I do like that the album cover is The Jaws of Life. <laughs> so this rock band from California has a very changing style. Sometimes they're pop punk, sometimes they're metalcore, sometimes they're emo. So I also don't know very much about Pierce the Veil, but this album was a lot poppier than I was expecting. Very clean vocals, and the music wasn't anywhere near as fast or as heavy as I was expecting. It's still rock music, don't get me wrong, it's just very chill and calming considering how heavy rock music can be. Especially considering this album has song titles like Death of an Executioner and Flawless Execution. I was expecting those songs to be heavier. Anyway, I was a bit surprised by how light it was, but I really did enjoy the album, it is a good listen. Next up, Those Damn Crows with Inhale, Exhale. This is a Welsh rock band, and this album somebody specifically asked what my opinions were, so I'm going to give them to you. So this music exists somewhere on the cusp of rock and metal. It's not really rock, it's heavier than that, it's not really metal, it's lighter than that. It's somewhere in the middle, but it is really good. It's not too heavy or fast-paced, but there are some metal elements in there, like the distortion of the guitars. And the vocals are just wonderful to hear. He is a delight. Um, thankfully for a Welsh rock band, the singer does not have a strong Welsh accent. The whole album has a very fun vibe and all the songs are quite upbeat, which makes it a joy to listen to. This is a really good album, I definitely suggest you all check it out. Next up, Godsmack with Lighting Up The Sky. So when I first saw the name Godsmack, I thought, oh, I know that band. So I looked them up and I kind of went, what's the biggest thing that their songs have been in? They had a song in The Mummy 3, The Scorpion King. So maybe they're not as big as I thought they were. Anyway, it's some very nice Americana rock music with some bits that are a lot lighter than I was expecting. The vocalist has a really nice American drawl. There are some really beautiful guitar riffs in there, but the whole album never really gets terribly heavy. That's not a bad thing though. The whole album is a very good listen with a nice guitar focused sound. Now onto the albums from March and we're starting with Periphery with Periphery 5, Gent is not a genre. Which, first of all, I really like the kind of meta commentary there. Especially considering that on Wikipedia, this album is classed as gent. <laughs> Second off, is it gent? De gent? Gent? D dent? I do not know how you pronounce that genre. I'm kind of with them that it's kind of annoying. So, I mean, I would probably just call this band progressive metal slash metalcore. I'm pretty sure that covers everything that they do. The songs are very aggressive and fast, and although they use some very varied time signatures, although that is a characteristic of Gent, or, you know, progressive metal. <laughs> and even despite the weird time signatures, I really got into this album, it was a very good listen, and that's for me, someone who really likes melody in my heavy metal music. So then, after a few songs of this fairly fast, very heavy metalcore, they hit you with Silhouette, a song that is like an 80s synth pop ballad. It's very light, it's very airy, it could have been like, take that or something. So weird. This song gave me whiplash. <laughs> Next up, Suicide Silence with Remember, You Must Die. So this is a deathcore band, if you didn't get that from the references to death and dying in the band name and the album name. <laughs> so this is super fast, very rough vocals, very very time signatures. It's very headbangy kind of music. Again, something I'd really like to see live. 
I read a Kerrang! review of this album and there was a line talking about the drums that described the double kick as sounding like a belt-fed machine gun. Which is very apt, but also a fantastic way of describing it. The album as a whole wasn't really my thing. I kind of liked it, but it was a little bit too fast, a little bit too raw for me. Next up, August Burns Red with Death Below. This album basically sounds like Suicide Silence, but with all of the dials turned back a little bit. It's slower, it's not as heavy, the vocals are a little bit cleaner. And I really got into this album a lot more than I got into the Suicide Silence album. I really, really enjoyed the August Burns Red album. It's still heavy, but it's not heavy to the nth degree, you know? All the songs do something slightly different, it's not just one song that lasts for an hour, which means that it's easier to engage with it, and you can actually enjoy each individual song. Honestly, this would have been my favourite album of the month, if not for the next album I listened to, which was... Baby Metal with The Other One. I'm already expecting the people in the comments telling me that Baby Metal aren't real metal. <laughs> So, Baby Metal are the Japanese band that combine heavy metal with Japanese idol genres. So, Baby Metal have always had the issue that a lot of people see them as kind of a novelty joke band, but this album, I think, would make people think differently. This is a very professional album, they really take it seriously, and I really, really liked it. They've really worked hard to properly combine the two musical genres, and it sounds amazing. All of the songs are a little bit longer than you may expect, which I think is part of the professionalism. It's not a two minute joke song, all of them are four or five minutes long. It's 40 minutes of fun, varied, upbeat, heavy metal music. Genuinely, who doesn't enjoy that? And that is all of the albums that I'm covering that came out in the past two months. Honestly, there were probably like three dozen albums that came out in those months, but these are the ones that I have chosen. If there's any that I may have missed, let me know in the comments. So next up we have Music Festival Explorer. This is my website where I talk about heavy metal, music festivals, things within that sphere. In the past few months I have written a blog post about whatever happened to Sonosphere. Now, Sonosphere was basically download festival in everything but the name, and it was fantastic. It only existed for a few years, but they were some good years. So anyway, if you are interested in what happened to the Sonosphere Music Festival, there is a link in the description. Please do check it out if you're interested. And finally, we have the stories from the past two months. Now, I've got two stories for you this month, and they're both a bit weird. Now, heavy metal bands playing pop-up gigs in fast food restaurants is weirdly not anything new. In the past, I have covered a band who did a gig on the back of a pickup truck in the drive through of a Wendy's. And obviously there is the very famous metal gig at a Denny's. And now we have the story of a band who played a gig in a subway. The sandwich shop, not a train station. So the aptly titled band Silly Goose played a gig in their local subway and played some music that I think is meant to sound like that for some fucking reason, and it sounds like this. Who is going to that gig? Honestly. Now I genuinely think it's becoming too popular for bands to play gigs at fast food restaurants and I think they should all think outside the box. Go to a church where there is a wedding going on and play a gig there. Interrupt a funeral and play a gig there. Like, you know, think outside the box, do something crazy. For liability reasons, I'd like to point out I am not advocating any heavy metal band interrupt a funeral to play a gig. Are we clear on that? And the second story from the past two months is actually a blog post I would like to point everybody towards by a rabbi. Now that sounds weird, and that's because it is weird. The title of the blog post is A Rabbi's Guide to Extreme Metal. So it's a blog post from this middle-aged rabbi who happens to be a metalhead and really likes extreme metal, and talking about his experiences with it and kind of what he gets out of it, it's a fascinating blog, genuinely. And honestly, I think it's important for people to learn about metalheads who don't fit the stereotype of the stoner in the denim battle jacket, drinking lots of beer, things like that. This is a respectable rabbi in his community who just happens to really like extreme metal. There's also a fascinating bit where he explains about how he emails a lot of bands that he listens to to say that he really enjoyed their music and also to find out if they're massive racists and anti-Semites or not. I have had some cringy conversations with musicians who came from the same region as my father, but whose grandfathers were on very different sides of the Holocaust. It was interesting and often horrifying to hear their viewpoints. Let's just say I did not buy their albums. 
It honestly is a really fascinating read. There is a link in the description. I suggest you all check it out. And that is everything I have for you for this month and also last month. If you enjoyed this video, please do click like and subscribe. If you listen to any of the albums I talked about, let me know in the descriptions what you thought of them. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Rob and I will see you in another video very soon. <laughs>